give Bio a hard time for being super memorization focused, and by no means am I taking back that statement, okay? Bio is very memorization focused, but really, some of the concepts are actually kind of cool. So, we're gonna talk about Bio today. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and a lot of you guys have been asking me to do some more uh, biology videos. I only did one. I only did that Yusubo, how to make Yusubo semifinals one, and that one I really went into how to make the actual Yusubo semifinal. Not really much else biology related. And really, if you're only focused on Yusubo or Science Bowl or any of those kind of competition kind of things, then basically everything you need to know is in that video. Because basically, the Yusubo takes everything from the textbook called Camp Bell Biology. So, the best thing to do if you want to do well in this is just to read through it. There's no shortcuts. Any shortcut you take is just going to make you take longer to do it. Which seems kind of counterintuitive, but yeah, like taking shortcuts doesn't work for biology. The textbook gives like a ton of cool examples, and those are not going to be there if you try to take a shortcut. And really, like the Yusubo asks them really obscure questions, and so does Science Bowl. So if you just want to get like good rounded knowledge about bio, just read the textbook. It's not that bad, and it's really, really helpful. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys a couple more pointers if you wanted to study for those, and just like a couple more ways to test your skills. And then I also wanted to talk about cool concepts because that's what bio is all about other than memorization, that's right. All right, so I didn't mention this in the other video, but after you've read the book, you probably want to know like, how good am I at bio? Like, did I just read the book and forget everything? So basically the strategy is read the book once, just read through it, like really just read through the whole thing. Then go look at past use of a paper which are on the sketchy website, let me show you. So yeah, this sketchy website called BioLympiads has all the past Olympiads for the Yusubo. So basically just after you read it, go through these tests, see what you miss, and then read up more on those specific things. And like, honestly, not everything's gonna be in the book, but if you've already read the book, you've understood a lot of the concepts in the book, and you find something hard, then like search that up on Wikipedia or something. There's also something called the British BioLympiad, which I think is slightly easier than the USA version, and you can find that online as well. And they have more past papers on this website too, so if you wanna like practice more and more bio questions, you got more resources over here. Pretty epic. So generally, like, in making these bio videos, I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing because I feel like the best way to do it is just read the book. But I don't know, I wanna help you guys with your biology Olympiad and I don't really know how to do that. So if you guys have got specific videos in mind, just let me know down in the comments and I will make it for sure. Like, absolutely. But from my interpretation of what you guys are asking for, I feel like there's a lot of concepts in the book that even if you read it, like even if you read the whole book, you still not understand some of the concepts because they're like kind of hard to understand. So until you guys give me some more suggestions, I'm going to be going over some really cool concepts that are somewhat hard to understand at first glance. So today we are going to tackle the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is just a fancy way of saying equilibrium in bio alleles and all that nonsense. Bio is very good at giving very interesting names to things. Alright, so Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So let me take you back to your ninth grade biology class. Okay, maybe if like four to your ninth grade biology class if you're in middle school, but yeah, to your ninth grade biology class where you learn that there are two variations of a gene called allele. And basically every gene codes for something that shows up on your body, like your eye color, your hair length, your hair color, I don't know, all that good jazz. And basically which two versions of the genes, which two alleles you have is gonna determine what shows up on your body. So you've probably seen alleles represented like this, right? There's a capital letter for the dominant allele and a lowercase letter for the recessive allele. So let's say the dominant allele says that you have brown eyes. This is not scientifically accurate, okay, but this is just an example. And let's say that the recessive is black. So then if you had two dominant alleles, then you're gonna have brown eyes. If you had one dominant and one recessive, you're gonna have brown eyes. And if you had two recessives, then you're gonna have black eyes. Okay, so now that we know what alleles are and we know how they like manifest in an individual, let's talk about the population, like the massive population. So we got a bunch of boyos in our population, right? And they have weird heads, no I'm kidding. But yeah, so we got a bunch of guys in our population and they all have different alleles. So let's say the first guy is brown eyed with two dominant alleles and the next guy is like also brown eyed but he has one recessive allele and so on. So now the key to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is to understand what allele frequency means. So basically what allele frequency means is probably what it sounds like, but it's basically how often a certain allele occurs in the population. So in this case, we see that there's eight alleles, right? Two per person. But we also know that four of them are little a and four of them are big a. So that means we have a 50% of the big allele and 50% of the small allele. Alrighty, now that we got all that nasty terminology out of the way, we could decide what Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium actually is. And that is literally just this allele frequency over here doesn't change ever. Even after like people have babies or after it goes down like 600 generations, it's still gonna have the same allele frequency. 50-50, next generation, 50-50, next generation, 50-50. It doesn't matter like what arrangement they are in, like whether or not they're in the same person or not, but 
As long as the overall population frequency is 50-50, it's in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. In a lot of problems, they call the allele frequency of the dominant allele, they just call it P, and then they call the frequency of the small allele Q. Now what's cool about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is that you could divide it into five conditions and make it so that this allele frequency doesn't change. Like, if you have these five conditions, the allele frequencies are never going to change. And let's talk about those right now. Number one, random mating. Now why is this relevant? Now the reason why this is relevant is because if people like mated based on like certain preferences, then they might prefer like brown eyes over black eyes. And then the allele frequency would increase because more people would have brown eyes because more people are passing on their brown genes. So that's why you gotta have random mating. And then the next condition is that you have massive population size, like massive, like humongous, like not just two people. That's not gonna stay constant. You have to have like thousands and millions, I don't know, a lot. And the reason for this one is because if you have like too small of a population, there's a chance, like a tiny chance that it'll change, right? Because things are random, right? And if you have like a small sample set, like things are gonna vary for sure. But if you have like a ton of people, the likelihood that it varies in all of them is very small. So overall, the variation will be very, very small and it will basically stay the same. So Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. All right, three, no natural selection. This is kind of the same reason as the first one, random mating, but like, if nature prefers black eyes over brown eyes because black eyes are just better at playing foosball or something, then there's going to be more black eyes in the next generation because they'll survive better. And that's no good. We don't want to have an increase in allele frequency. This is hardy wine for equilibrium. And then number four, no moving out. Okay, you can't leave. The problem with in or out is because if people leave or people come in, then some alleles are going to leave and some alleles are going to come in and that could shift the balance of alleles overall. So that's not good. And then the last but not least, maybe least, because I have a hard time remembering this one. But the fifth one is what? Bruh. Oh yeah, no mutations. That what it was. Okay, maybe I should remember this. This is kind of a big deal. But yeah, of course. If you have mutations, then maybe a big A might morph into like a random other allele and then mess everything up. So yeah, no mutations. Okay, no mutating X-Men. So those are the five conditions for Heidi Weinberg. And I hope that my explanations help you like remember it because if you can logic it out, then it's a lot easier to remember. So, Usable likes trolling and giving this as a math problem. So why don't we figure out how to do the math stuff, not this random like condition stuff. So an example useful problem might be like a population of gophers has eight he homozygous dominant, six heterozygous, and like three homozygous recessive. And then I'll ask you, if this population enters Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, how many offspring would you expect to be heterozygous or something like that? So the first step to any Hardy-Weinberg Hardy Hardy Weinberg problem is you first have to find P and Q. So basically we know that there are 8 plus 6 plus 3, which is 17 individuals, which means 34 alleles total, right? And then we know that our homozygous dominant guys contribute two of these dominant alleles per person. So this gives us 16 dominant alleles, and then the next guy gives one of each. So this gives us 6 dom and 6 recessive and then the last guy gives us two recessive each so we get six recessive so basically we can just calculate the allele frequency of the dominant one by adding up the number of dominant alleles and putting it over the total so that would just be 22 over 6 over 34 and then the other one would just be 12 over 30. in the actual use about they're going to give you like massive numbers so it would follow Hardy, Hardy Weinberg equilibrium but like in this case I'm just using it as an example all right so we have P and Q right so basically P and Q are the probability that you get a big allele and the probability you get a small allele, respectively. So there's a 22 out of 34 chance that I get a big allele, but there's also a 12 out of 34 chance that I get a small allele. So if we're trying to find the proportion of the next generation that gets a big allele and a small allele, aka heterozygote, then we have to multiply the probabilities together. 22 over 34 times 12 over 34. However, the alleles can come in either order. It doesn't matter whether we get the big allele first or the small allele first. So we had to multiply this by two, and well, blam, what we get our answer is, I can't math in my head, 132 over 289, very nice. All right, and that's basically your answer. So basically the strategy is find P and Q, right? And then the number of heterozygotes is gonna be 2PQ. The number of homozygotes, as you could probably tell for dominant, is just P squared, because you had to get two of the same allele. And then finally, if you wanna get homozygous recessive, that's just Q squared, because the probability that you get a small allele times the probability you get another small allele. Epic. So that's basically all you gotta know about Hardy Weinberg. I think it's a super interesting concept. Uh, if you wanna have like more of the conceptual understanding, read the Wikipedia page because it's interesting. Alrighty, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know if you want more of these biology videos. A couple of you guys are asking for them. And let me know if there's specific types that you want. 
Alright, thank you guys for watching again, and see you guys next time.